I'm Dr. Marvin Suppla. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Hazelden. Hazelden's been around since the late 40s, and it was started by a group of businessmen from the Twin Cities area that just had concerns about friends who were suffering from alcoholism. One of the founding principles was to treat addicts and alcoholics with dignity and respect. And, and you can still see that every day around here. They started a program that was basically the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous and a little bit of medical care. And not much was known about alcohol detox at the time. In fact, from a medical perspective, it wasn't even well defined until the mid-50s. But they found that if they had people stay here and stay abstinent and start to look at those principles of AA, they did relatively well when they left. So with that, established a successful form of treatment that began to be used throughout the United States and ultimately worldwide. So we really were the pioneer in establishing worldwide treatment based on this model and it was the predominant model for decades. This is a stigmatized, misunderstood illness. You're supposed to be able to just handle your liquor or avoid drugs and, and, and some people don't and can't and we know that over half the risk of addiction is genetic now. And, uh, and other uh, life experiences ac account for the other aspects of the risk, like early childhood traumas and psychiatric illnesses. The pain, the internal pain of addiction, it can't really be measured, but it, it's probably the worst aspect of the disease because people are so guilty and, and so ashamed of what they've done, don't want to admit to it. We're not a culture that accepts discussion of such things, and especially all the problems associated with it. And, and some sort of admission that, that we have this illness that no one sees as illness. I was actually in treatment on the old lodge, which was the original farmhouse. So I can walk down the halls and actually have this sensation of what it was like when I was here as a patient. And it's important to me to maintain that perspective when I think about the care we provide to anyone that comes here. When people arrive, they don't want to be here. They're broken. They don't understand what's going on. They may have had multiple treatments and still really not understand the situation. And often, they're here under duress. In fact, probably over 90% of people are here because someone else required it, whether it was family, their job, or the courts that just said, you have to go to treatment or else. A very small percentage come here because they recognize they had a problem. And we need to, first of all, help them fully realize the extent of the addiction so they can come to that level of acceptance. I kind of think of it as opening the, the book on their own addiction story, that they can really see it for what it is. Because without that, it's hard to make the, the difficult steps necessary to get into recovery. We address any co-occurring illness that people walk in the door with, and, and it's usually the case that people have something else going on. In our adult population, in residential treatment, over 75% of the people also have a psychiatric illness. In our youth population, which is about age 14 to 25, that can be above 90, 95% of people already have a diagnosed psychiatric illness before they arrive and are usually taking medication. We provide the appropriate medications, the appropriate psychotherapies that they need, and we're really working to advance our treatment programming for those people so that they not only get the medication psychotherapy, but also a skill set necessary to the particular psychiatric problem they have. Now there's tremendous research in the neurosciences of addiction, and the medical world itself has really taken on addiction in terms of recognition of need for treatment and research and more information. But we compare that with a 12-step understanding, which has been shown in research to have remarkable benefit for people in remaining abstinence. And we've begun to realize that outpatient treatment is as successful for certain groups of folks as residential treatment is. And that's allowed us here at Hazelden to use all this other information and to examine the underpinnings of addiction. Recovery has to do with engaging with other people and, and admi admitting to other people that one has the problem so you can receive the help necessary for it. And, and that is something we see every day is that people start to kind of come out of their shell and, and look outside themselves again. Because addiction's an isolated illness. You don't want anyone to know 
you don't even want to see it yourself. So you really become isolated, and, and even if you're around a lot of people, you're remarkably isolated. You don't let them know who you really are. And to start to have that process happen where people are smiling again, <laughs> laughing again, and, and starting to look at themselves in a remarkably different way, we see that every day. So we get to put all of this together under one roof in all of our programs to really help people, I think, in the best way possible, to, to really pull all of the information together and not just one's bias about, you know, I'm just going to use a medication to treat addiction or I'm just going to use a kind of behavioral therapy. We'll do it all um, and really help people to learn how they can stay sober for a lifetime. <laughs>